today we're going to talk about the top indicators I think of whenever I am considering SIBO or small intestinal bacteria overgrowth. SIBO is a motility disorder that is associated with lots of gas and bloating. You may also see constipation and diarrhea with this, but essentially SIBO is an overgrowth of bad bacteria in the small intestine. We want bacteria in the large intestine, but with motility disorders, stool is either moving too quickly or slowly, we will see that the bacteria will overgrow in the small intestine. That contributes to the lots of gas and bloating that you're gonna see with SIBO because essentially you are fermenting a lot of your food. So the top nine indicators that I think of, first of all, the symptoms are dramatically improved after a course of antibiotics. So sometimes I'll see patients after a course of antibiotics for like something unrelated to their gut health, and they'll see a dramatic improvement in their gut health symptoms. So less bloating, less gas, less constipation. Another sign that I'll see is that your symptoms are dramatically worse with a probiotic, specifically that contains a prebiotic, such as inulin or fructooligosaccharides, FOS. So check your probiotic to see if that contains any of those two ingredients, if your gas and bloating are worse with that probiotic, if it contains those prebiotics in it, because essentially those prebiotics are feeding the bad bacteria. Again, going on along those lines, prebiotics such as fiber is also going to worsen your GI symptoms. So if you can't tolerate fiber, then SIBO should be a top consideration. Another common issue that I will see is that SIBO patients do really well on a gluten-free diet, but they may not have amelioration in all of their symptoms from a strict gluten-free diet. And that's because a lot of the gluten-free products contains gums and starches, which may aggravate SIBO. Another sign that I'll consider SIBO is chronic GI symptoms after using a proton pump inhibitor, such as Prilosec, which is over the counter, or Omeprazole, which is a prescription. You may see this because those medications deplete stomach acid, which is essential in preventing SIBO. Stomach acid is your body's second line defense against any kind of bacteria that may be hanging along to your food. So these medications can actually lead to SIBO. That's why those medications are only designed to be used for a short amount of time or if absolutely necessary. Another thing that I will look for is a history of surgery. After surgery, typically you are prescribed pain medications which can, which can actually slow your motility and lead to constipation. Um, another thing to look for is abdominal surgery which can cause scar tissue and also can mess with motility. So those are two things to consider also when considering SIBO. Different lab markers that may indicate SIBO is a chronic low ferritin level or low iron. This is typically seen when there's no other cause addressed. You're eating meat, you're eating rich iron sources, whether that plant-based or animal-based, and you're still having low iron, then we would wanna consider malabsorption due to the bacteria overgrowth in your gut. And lastly, you also wanna consider if you have a history of traveler's diarrhea or food poisoning because certain situations like this can also set the stage for SIBO leading to chronic motility disorders. If any of these signs resonated with you and you're wanting to get to the root cause of your digestive disorders, then consider doing a SIBO breath test or consulting with a naturopathic doctor. If you like this video, go ahead and follow some more tips and tricks on health and wellness.